You know, I was uh, thinking this morning a bit about this concept that you get what you set your mind to. And that, you know, made me realize there's a lot of people that somehow, uh, let me see if I can say this right. There's a lot of people that think that our, uh, who we are is really controlled by our environment that we're in. And I don't know if I agree with that at all. I think, I think there's an impact on us. I think that the environment we're in or the situation we're in has a dramatic impact on it. There's no doubt that it impacts us. It influences us and impacts us. But does it shape who we are? I just reject that notion. I completely reject that notion. I think we can become who we are irregardless of our environment. Um, yeah, we'll have to overcome our challenges and our problems. Now, I do admit that it may be easy for me to say because my parents provided me with a relatively comfortable existence comparative to most people, to, to a lot of people. So um, I, I think I can say that easily because I didn't suffer Um I, but I think most people, especially in modern society in the United States, uh, don't don't really suffer. I mean, I know there are people that do, but for the most part, um, a lot of people that, you know, we complain about things that, that cause us problems or we complain about issues that we face. Um, but really, when you compare ourselves to the long history of humanity, we've got it pretty easy. But that led me down this, this thought process of, do you, can you really set your mind and achieve something? I mean, what is that? Well, I started researching it, and I found this guy, Albert Bandura, a Stanford psychologist, a guy from Canada. He, he passed away a few years ago. He lived a long life. He was like, I think he died when he was 95. But somewhere in the 70s, he started, he hit on this idea of self efficacy, this idea that we can define ourselves through, our, we, we have experiences, true, but we can define ourselves through our own self esteem. And by so doing, we can impact um, our future by the way we, the, by our mindset effectively. And so he wrote several books on it, one of which I've read through. Um, called um, Self-Efficacy, The Exercise of Control, which is a great book, by the way. It's one of the, in the, in the world of psychology or human psychology, it's probably one of the greatest books. Um, it's just definitely good. So, you know, in a world with all these challenges and uncertainty going on, you know, there are some people actually proposing a philosophy that says that your destiny and who you are is shaped by your environment or shaped by what you were born into or shaped by what you look like or maybe even shaped by your skin color or whatever uh, um, that you are. And, and I, I, I think that, that um, uh, Bandura's book is, uh, is the polar opposite idea. It's the idea that we can set our minds to our own dreams, and those dreams can be power can be empowering and transformative. So we have the ability to overcome whatever experiences we have and harness those experiences to to create the world that we desire. Now it's not easy, and some people have it harder than others. That's absolutely true. But Bandura's idea is that our ability to succeed in specific situations is tied directly to our belief system, our belief system and our self. And I think he would have probably have argued that all humans need to understand and harness this power of self-efficacy to unlock um, our, our true capabilities. So he argued that there were, or he demonstrated through his research, that there were four types of experiences that kind of grow us as people. One of his mastery experiences, he referred to these as times when we have success. So the more success you have, it breeds more confidence. So every time you achieve, no matter how small, it builds a belief in our capabilities. And, and this is probably something you need to realize 
when you're working with other people or even raising children, like you have to give them a, the ability to have success that, that they create, even if it's very small, because the more success they have, the more they'll build confidence in themselves. I think also um, vicarious experiences. You can see other people have success, and that can bolster the belief that you also can be successful. Um, I think, and these are probably in order of power, right? The third and less powerful is verbal persuasion. People can encourage you and help you feel better and enhance your belief. And then finally, um, you know, physical and emotional states or physiological response can have a lot to do with our self-confidence. I mean, if you're just not feeling well or you're feeling emotionally drained or stressed or tired or physically ill, that can have a big impact on you, right? So um, I think those four areas um, are part of our development. And, and I don't think these are all happening in your youth. I think they happen all the time. So you can maybe be initially successful in life and then have a string of failures and that could have a negative impact on your confidence. So I think there's tons of implications to this in our own health and in and, and our education and our achievements in business. Uh, everything in our personal and professional life are impacted by our view of how effective we are as self. So I think we need to learn, or I, at least I need to learn, to cultivate this self-effectiveness. This is not something you can just take for granted. I mean, I've always had a high view of my self-efficacy. I believe, I've grown up believing I can do anything. I mean, I think it's probably one thing my parents gave me, probably the best gift my parents gave me, which is I believe that I could do anything. I could run for president of the United States if I wanted to. I could, I could do literally anything. So I believe, I, I've always had that belief. Now, that belief system has been challenged. So, because I have failed and failed miserably. But I've also had reinforcing successes. But I do believe that Bandura was right. You have to cultivate this. Continuously setting goals, making commitments, driving yourself towards achievement and success. Because each success you have cultivates more of your belief system that you can be effective as a person. So Ben Dura's message was pretty powerful because it goes against the idea that we're mere products of our environment and it puts the power to shape our own destiny in our own hands. So we can go out and create the world that we desire. Anything is possible as long as we set our minds to be in control of our destiny. We are not passive bystanders, but we're active participants capable of making a difference in our lives and in the lives of others. So, good book. Albert Bandura's Self-Efficacy, The Exercise of Control. Um, but it's also just a good attitude.